Hello and welcome to the Will Leach Show. I am the aforementioned Will Leach and I thank you for spending part of your day with me. Today's show is about overnight successes. My favorite current baseball player is Tommy Pham. Pham is a center fielder for my beloved St. Louis Cardinals, which is a big reason I love him. But the reason he's my favorite player is that, well, he's old. Okay, well, not really old. He's 30, an age only teenagers think is old. But in athletic terms, he's ancient, because, particularly because last year was his first full year in the majors. Sandy Koufax was retired at 30, and Tommy Pham was just showing up. Pham was one of the best players in baseball last year. He was faded immediately by baseball fans, the overnight success who had arrived and just started hitting. But Pham, of course, had been scuttling through the minor leagues for years, frustrated, fuming. So while we may have all been delighted by how great a player he was at such an advanced age, he, quite understandably, was furious we didn't get to see any of this years ago. He sent it off to this magazine last month, saying his mindset in the minors was, they're not going to f***ing call me up, f*** it, and I just f***ing zoned out. Every day I was just like, f*** this. This anger might seem a bit misplaced to you. Tommy, you get to play baseball every day for money. That is awesome. But I suspect this is the secret mindset of every successful athlete, movie star, politician, and really any famous person at all. The thing we forget about overnight st stardom, and really stardom in general, is that everybody comes from nothing. At some point, with the possible exception of Blue Ivy and other royal babies, every famous person is a nobody, a regular schmuck that nobody cares about. Except that person cared about themselves very much back then. They spent every day, like you and me, walking around without anybody giving them a moment's notice. Then, however they got it, however they did it, they got famous, and suddenly you can't get enough of them. Suddenly you have all sorts of thoughts about how they live their life. Suddenly you think they're part of your life. Is it any wonder the celebrities and athletes get a little nuts in the spotlight? They've been here for years. It's you that just got here. Think of every celebrity as a fan of a tiny indie band that suddenly went huge. It's irritating when the world loves or hates Jack White when you were jamming to Jay St Day Still in your dorm room, right? Before it was cool, man. Well, celebrities are the indie band. The world can't help but look like posers. It's important to remember that every successful person, however they got there, was once not a successful person. And they will always, always think of themselves as they were back then. They've always been the star of their own movie. Your surprise overnight success story is the culmination of their life's work. So cut Tommy Pham or Marvin Bagley or even Baron Trump some slack. They're just trying to live their lives like they always have. It's just now that you started noticing. Our guest today is the star of the excellent film The Light of the Moon, and she also plays Detective Rosa Diaz on the excellent, wonderful, wonderful Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Please welcome Stephanie Beatrice. <laughs> Madam, thank you very much. Please, please come sit, sit on the... Uh, on the sacred on the couch. Tiny couch. Yes, exactly. Um, okay. So thank you for coming on. I'm a, I, I really it is very an honor to me. Every time I talk to someone that's on like a show that I watch all the time, I always feel like like in the Twilight Zone movie where like I <laughs> went into the cartoon. I'm hanging out with the cartoon characters. Yep. Like I'm oh I'm yep. on the Flintstones right now. That's and I'm awesome. hanging out with the Flintstones. That's awesome. So thank you for uh, for coming on. The theme of the show I always kind of do themes to these shows. Yes. And one of the themes, the theme today is actually the idea of like overnight successes and how right. it turns to, uh, particularly, you know, I have a very low level celebrity, you have a high level of celebrity. And I'm always curious what, what it's like, because you worked for a long time to try yeah. to make it as an actress and do all the things you have to do and, and, and fight, your way, fight your way up. And then one day you catch your break yeah. and then instantly it's like that. Yeah. And so you've been telling the story your entire life of I'm working, I'm working, working. All of a sudden everyone's like, wait, this person is entered into our lives yeah. and now we have all sorts of thoughts about you. I'm curious, what was that transition like when you went from having worked for a long time to, to, to get to where you were to suddenly, oh, everybody knows her now? Well, I mean, you know, what's interesting is I don't get recognized very much because because you're smiling. My voice is different, and my <laughs> demeanor is different. Yeah. My hair is different. I wear glasses a lot of the time, so I am pretty incognito. What ends up happening a lot is a sort of confusion <laughs> with people. Right. They sort of are like, "Do you're I know friendly. you? Have I met you?" <laughs> right. You know. Um, so I would say that, like, even though maybe on I guess on paper or on the internet, right. it's like, yes. "Oh, this person's like." They've got, they've got all the success and all of this great stuff is happening. I'm still 
I still feel like I'm still like uh, on the precipice of yeah. what my career will eventually become. I hope, you know, like when I think about people whose careers I would like to emulate, Brian Cranston comes up mm -hmm. because I think like he had this great, amazing run on this ridiculous mm -hmm. sitcom. And then shift. And then shifted into this incredible, incredible character arc in Breaking Bad that we all know and really admire. Um, yeah, so I go back and watch Malcolm in the Middle now, and I'm like looking who's for that? parts of him, right? right? Like, I'm like, okay, there's Walter White. There he is right there. That is the way to do it. I mean, that's the, uh, that to me is the actor's dream. So I'm still sort of like gaining momentum until I can get to that thing, too. But of course, what's funny about that is Pro Brian Cranston probably feels the same way. Yeah. It's like, I'm working my way up to something. Yeah. I'm going to turn the corner totally. at some point. I think that's probably just life, right? I think right? that's also how all actors feel. They're sort of... There was this horrible, there's this horrible saying about dancers, you're only as good as your last eight counts, yeah. which means like if you screw up in those mm -hmm. last eight counts, everyone's gonna remember. <laughs> right. And it's sort of yeah. similar like that way for actors. It's like, well, what's, what? Are, I mean, the question that you get asked in LA and a lot when you answer the question or someone asks you at a party, what do you do? I'm an actor. Oh, have you been in anything I've seen? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't People know what you want. People actually say that. People, People actually, like, do they actually do yes. that? Yes. I've not been in any of those parties. Yes. That sounds And it's like not just LA. It's like, it, the worst is have in the Midwest or like <laughs> oh, in, in right. the South where I'm from, <laughs> right. when my, my mom will introduce me to friends of hers. And they'll be like, oh, well, what do you want? <laughs> well, where are, but who are you? <laughs> Which is like, I don't, I'm Sylvia's daughter. I don't know how to answer that question. That is, but it's, that is a weird thing. It feels like there's people having their, in, their inside voices come out yeah. or so on the idea. Yeah. So it feels, I guess you would always feel that way. But I'm curious though, particularly with your family though, I mean yeah. like they, you know, I mean, they obviously have watched everything. I can't get my family to watch the show. It's kind of frustrating. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure they have, they, your family is much more kind than mine and actually watched all your stuff. Did yeah. they feel, did they start to notice a difference when Brooklyn Nine-Nine hit and you went from, so you've had your moments, you've had, you have some yeah. family, you've done some, some good stuff, but when that happened, clearly that, yeah. actually, did, did they notice, did they feel it, or you, did you have to be like, no, I'm serious, I'm on the show, the Lonely Island guy is on yeah. it? Yeah, like, I think they are, they're really happy. I mean, my parents immigrated from the U.S. when I was two, so for them, this is the actual the actual American dream has happened. They sacrificed a lot. They set aside all of their dreams and they were like, you know what, we're just gonna put all of our dreams and pressure onto you, so let's see if you can do it. And it I'm happened. So glad you made it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but I think also that for them is really satisfying in a way that I, I, I will never understand what that's like. And so at every turn possible, they talk about the show. My dad has this Brooklyn Nine-Nine hat that he wears all the time. Oh, so it's really sweet. sweet. He'll like tell people <laughs> when I'm standing there and be like, hey, do you watch, hey, uh, you watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine? She's on it. People are like, uh, yes, actually, or what, you know. Right. But they're very, very, very proud. Yeah, they're, my dad does that with my book. He'll give it to people on airplanes. Right? And it's just like, leave. He just like, wants to start a conversation yeah, so he can hand the book like, off. Like, seriously. Like, Which uh, is very. I know, it's funny, because it's like, or in any other context, bothering someone on a plane is totally sure. unacceptable. But when sure, it's a father, but in that, father, I feel it's, like it's really totally. sweet. It's and do really they. Sweet. It, it's it's strange too because obviously with success comes you know I, I uh, you talk about not seeing on the street but certainly the internet for example uh, the internet. Uh, and all of that yes. how aware are they of that do they do they keep track of that do they do they do they have do. any idea because I would I imagine the dads would get like really particularly protective I, of this I stuff. think they do keep track I mean I think my dad must have some kind of Google alert or something neither one of them are on are on Instagram and I've refused to show them mm -hmm. how that works because yeah. I want to just keep some things. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course. Aside. Are they on Twitter or anything? I don't think they're yeah. on Twitter. Twitter is, if they're happy, they're not. I mean, the Twitter's the Wild West, it's really. Nice. And I don't know if they can handle yeah. it. So, yeah. So and so and that's what I'm curious too is that now because being part of that process and obviously like doing the movie Light of the Moon like mm -hmm. that is like a, a, it's funny because you know, I saw you in uh, Short Term Twelve. Oh yeah, uh, which is a wonderful movie. Thank I have you. a few questions about that uh, uh, later on, but it had nothing to do with sitcoms and nothing to do with that whatsoever. And that's what I kind of I, I find it fascinating that like the idea the old Andy Kaufman idea like yeah. you do the show and then you do your. Not that your, Brooklyn Nine your is not, other stuff. Right, not that Brooklyn Nine is right. not good work, but like, mm -hmm. it, it, is that the goal? Is that is that the Cranston goal, I guess? Yeah, for me it absolutely is. I think the, the work that I would like to do in my lifetime, I want to, here's the thing. I think for a lot of people, connecting on a very vulnerable level is not available to them at all times, right? Like we're raising children, we're taking care of parents, we're dealing with a mortgage, we're paying bills, we're waking up and doing all these things and then going to bed. And one of the ways that we get 
sort of stuff through ourselves is going to the movies and watching television. And one of the ways that we can connect with other human beings is going to the movies and watching television. And for me, part of being a human is sharing in that human experience and channeling stories and and using myself as like a kind of a vessel to talk about stuff. Um, it's always been something that I'm really, really drawn to. So I think all ends of the spectrum that are available to me, I want to that sounds, dabble that in. That sounds exhausting. I mean, it sounds wonderful, <laughs> but it really sounds exhausting. I mean, to me it doesn't though. It sounds okay. like the thing that like, right. as that's kids just say, thing, it gives right. me life, right? right, right. Like that's yeah, the thing, I type words really as the drag queens right. say actually. Yeah, I right, mean like, right. to me that is really hard. Like I've written some short essays and stuff and it's really hard for me. And for some people that's the, their, jo their joy is putting their thoughts through their hands and into like a computer and yeah. having to read Whereas for me, it. like the, the first show, I stared into the camera blankly. <laughs> for, like, <laughs> totally confused what was happening. And you're a natural. Right? Thanks. Um, okay, so now we're gonna do. Uh, now we have a segment. We have a segment called "Frivolous Questions of Dubious Import." I can't wait. It's very. They're they're, they're not hard, okay. but and they're not interesting and they're not smart. Great. They Frivolous. Do have words. Dubious. Okay, going back to a uh, short term twelve. Yes. I'm a huge fan of short term twelve and the list of actors that emerge from that. You, Rami Malek, Brie Larson, Lakeith Stanfield. It's pretty staggering to actually see that. Movie no, and see how people. great everybody in that movie. So now that you're all doing well and you're all successful, I want I want to just you can admit it, but we'll turn the cameras off for this. Okay. Which of them are you really surprised actually made it? Like you, mean, you're looking at them, then you're like, okay, that that that, that they're not very good. None of them none actually. Of them, yeah, none yeah. of them are surprising to me. All of them I are. I, I mean, but really, like I, I remember watching Keith on set and just thinking that kid is it's, like lightning in a bottle. He <laughs> yeah. really is. Yeah. And he kept to himself so much on set. I was actually really curious about him because it was the first thing that he had done really. Um, uh, Dustin found him. I think, I, I'm not sure if he found him for the short or what, but he, he was just absolutely magnetic. And I also didn't know at the time that he was I think he was like 22 yeah. when we shot the film, and he was, you know, he playing like, a 17 year old. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was, he's fantastic, but I'm not surprised by any of it. Oh, they're there. Actually, at the, that year at South By, we were shooting the pilot of Brooklyn Nine Nine, oh, wow. and I couldn't be there, and I was devastated uh, that I couldn't. Be I there. tried to get them to Photoshop you in, but they oh, thought thanks. it was intellectually oh, dishonest. <laughs> um, okay, I read somewhere, forgive me, uh, uh, you worked as a guide at a Queen's Corn Maid. That's correct. What? is that exactly so there is a f working farm in queens mm -hmm. and every year that's surprising enough i know right <laughs> i know every year they they have this giant cornfield and there's a company that cuts a maze into the cornfield okay and so it's a maze maze yeah. get it yeah uh, oh yeah they do it they right. do it no, they, they, i'm from the midwest great. we right. have we have plenty of corn yeah so there's for, one I think there my prom was in a corn maze oh my god <laughs> there's one there uh and when i lived here in new york i was you know, struggling actor, and one of my friends was doing like arranging for the tour guides, and I took a job, and I, it was that was it. You took it dead serious. It was, it. yeah, oh yeah, I definitely <laughs> took it really seriously. Sure. How I, could you not? I hated it. I hated it. <laughs> I truly hated it. I truly hated it. And like you'll turn a corner, and like there's like a child urinating. It's not a great scene. It's not family. I feel friendly. like though New York going from the Warriors in the '70s to corn mazes. No, today. we're doing great. That's a good sign. You know what, New right York, way. you're doing great. Yeah, you're doing a good right job. Direction. You're really doing it. Uh, okay, so you grew up near Houston. So I did. I'm assuming yes. after the Astros won uh, the World Series, you have a tattoo. Did you get a tattoo? I, mean, when I the was World really Series? happy. Well, how am for you? Like, I can't. Like, I, first off, obviously with everything that happened there that year, to have that kind of be the culmination. I know it was really fun. amazing. It was a an amazing moment as a as a fan, watching that last game, especially on my couch. I was just sweat, I was sweating. I was alone watching it, and I'm not a. I haven't been up until this. I've recently got engaged, and my fiance is really into sports, so I'm starting to thank you. I'm starting to learn what everything is, and I'm starting to sort of uh, get delve into that world more. You're starting to learn how to humor him when he goes on and on. Well, it's actually yes. really fun. It I is mean, fun, but like if you don't, amazing. I'm with you too. I know you are. But like my, but like my my my, my wife likes sports. Yeah. But like I really go on, I mean, and listen, on and on and on. I like sports. I like to go to the basketball game and like sit in the fancy seats right, and like right. have a glass of champagne. Like that's like yeah. really like the that's way the, to do enough. it, right. you know? But I mean that that game was incredible. And my dad was so psyched. My my family was so psyched. They were just so so happy. They've really I mean they're even though my dad's Colombian and my mom's Bolivian, they're they're from Houston. You know, like yeah, they've lived course, there for 30 course, years now. Yeah. 
Um, okay, do you have a favorite athlete? I figure this is a sports show. I said, oh, I like question. LeBron. You I like LeBron? I do. I okay, like LeBron. I'm, I'm so LeBron. Who doesn't like LeBron? I like LeBron, especially because, like, he, he seems so, I mean, I, mean, I don't know what's going to happen, but he seems right. very committed. Yes. Well, he got them a championship. He got he the did. Yeah. And he's really good in train wreck. He's actually really, he's good, actually in really good in I train know. wreck. I know. He's actually he's really, really good. It's actually really annoying. Like when Obama was a really good writer, it really irritated me because he's and like, you oh, you're good at all these other stay things. Stay in your lane. Stay in yeah, your lane. Yeah, seriously. No, 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 no it's people. great. Like, I was ha I'm glad. Like, I enjoyed the book. Yeah. I'm not, he should do what he wants. It's just annoying to me because I have chosen my writing as my career. What are you talking vocation. about? Well, you have a top. What are you doing? You have yeah, a top like, show right he now. He is like the best. He's like the doing great. He's the great president and he's a better writer than All right. That's a little annoying. All right. You're right. Do you think it hurts Terry Crews? When he f flexes his pecs like that, it, it feels like it hurt him. It doesn't hurt him. It doesn't. He can do it all day. He can do it all day. Does he do it all day? I mean, <laughs> sometimes we're now we're at the point where we're like, all right, Terry, just put it, put them yeah, away, yeah, yeah, put yes, them yes, away. Yes, We've yes, seen it. Yes. Yeah. I suppose if I could do that, I would. I mean, probably. Um, I've seen you, of course, uh, have a gun on the show. Do you have you fired a real gun? Do you, yes, I have. When, when is, if you don't mind me asking, when was the last? I don't know, with you. <laughs> when was the last time that you fired a gun? Uh, let me think. Um, it's been a minute. Uh, I would say probably last summer I was doing some training with guns mm -hmm. with the trainer in in L.A. Um, like smaller firearms and larger. Last uh, summer is not that long ago. No, not that long <laughs> That's ago. That's a lot more recently. Yeah, than we were ago. doing it a little. We were doing it kind of often last summer, and then once the shooting schedule for Brooklyn Nine Nine starts up, you really don't have a lot of time on your hands. But in cheap. Yeah, in the hiatus <laughs> times, you can go. Uh, we go down to um, there's a gun range in LA downtown, mm -hmm. and we go down there and like we just uh, sort of shoot for a couple hours and target practice and stuff. That's, yeah, that's that's I'm trying to keep much up more on it. Yeah, I'm trying to keep I've, up I've, on I've, it. I mean. yeah. Okay, so growing up in Texas, mm -hmm. it's exactly like Boyhood, right? It's exactly <laughs> like Boyhood. It's the exact same thing, right? <laughs> it's literally the exact same thing. Um, no comment. <laughs> Duly noted. <laughs> um, okay, so a show, uh, ongoing joke that we do on every show. Yes. Uh, have you ever had pink eye on camera? Like when uh, Bob Costas was on the Olympics. Remember when he was on the Olympics and he had the pink eye? I do not and he went back that, out that. that yeah. Poor, poor man. You ever had it? Never on a shooter. Never anything? had it. I never. I mean, I've had my, I've had my fair share of gnarly Just zits. But yeah, yeah, that's. They, they yeah. can cover those up. Can't yeah, cover that's, up pink that's, eye. That's, can't cover up pink eye. NBC can't do it. Uh, so I, I found it was funny when I was researching, uh, researching. I saw the Instagram. There's an Instagram of you and Emmy Rossum about. Oh yeah. Work out. Yeah. And it's, funny, it's like so inspiring. We're like we're gonna go kill it. We're gonna be awesome. <laughs> yeah. We're like and we're, we're I, like you guys are all ready to go. And then I made one of the dumbest mistakes you can ever do, which I was like, oh well, let's just see what people are saying about oh. this, so on. So this is my question. Yes. Do you like the internet? Generally, yes. Generally, yes. Um, I think people can be gnarly on the internet, but people can also be really wonderful. So I think you just have to sort of take the good and the bad at the same time. I'll just hope, that, that actually brings me to my final question yeah. for you, final question in this segment. Uh, do you honestly, I feel like I ask this question a lot because I'm getting worried about the planet. Yeah. Do you think the world is getting better or do you think it's getting worse? I think, I think it's getting that's a really good question. I know I it's really hard. I don't know. I you know. know. The answer I is find everyone, like, instinctively, I always want to go, like, yeah, yes! but and then, then you, you look think around. about <laughs> yeah. it. I, I think, uh, I think we're like trying. Yeah, I mean, we're doing our best. I think one of the things that makes me feel confident about the future is the, the idea that young people have right now that they really do have a voice and that their voices matter. And I think that that's something that, um, at least for me, I didn't figure out for a really long time, you know, probably until my 30s. I was like, oh, wait a minute, my my opinion, my thoughts, my, my sense of self is important. And I think people are finding that out much, much younger. I mean, I can't imagine the, the person that I would be if I had figured that out at 18. And I think some people are starting to figure that out okay, good. way earlier. So that's, okay, you know, that's I'm hopeful. Good. That's good, that makes me feel yeah. better. Okay, good, all right. All right, now we're gonna play a game. Okay. We're gonna play a game. It's called uh, it's called Stone Face, which is to say I just came up with the name like literally thirty seconds ago. Oh, okay. You are, of course, you are so great as Rosa Diaz on the show, Thank you. and one of the and of course as we've all seen talking to her now, you are not you do not actually share the <laughs> same personality as her. Which, I do not. Which I think speaks well to your skill as an actor. Thank you. So we're gonna test that skill as an actor. Great, I can't right wait. Now. And we're gonna see how much you can keep the stone face when watching. Cute internet videos. Okay, hold or on. Or sad interviews or funny interviews, internet videos. We're going to see how you do. So you can look at that camera right there. I'm going to look at this one right here. Here comes the first one. Let's see how, how long you can keep the straight face.
Okay, pretty good. Ignoring the dog eating the celery. I've seen that one. That was it. Oh, okay, okay. Let's. I was okay, prepped. Great. Okay. I was prepped for that one. You've, you, you know, if she's seen all of these, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm giggling. I've seen them all, and I'm going to be giggling, so you're going to beat me. Okay, next one. Next one. Here we go. Okay, I'm ready. She broke. Oh, broke. That's so sweet. She broke. Okay, oh. good. Just a little worry you didn't love a dog. That was really sweet. So, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, next one up. Uh, okay, next one up. Here's the next one. That was hard. Yeah, that, that was that really was, hard. That was that, really, that's basically that was what difficult. cable news is, by the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of right. watching that. Just the baby and the dog that squeaking. Was, that was it. difficult. Okay, two more. Next one. Okay. <laughs> okay. I got, here we go. There's, you got the shutter, right? Okay. Ah. See? Okay. You definitely did not see that coming. I did not. No one prepped you on that That one. is so funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I don't even know how they did it. Oh, my God. They could do that is CGI. so funny. It's wild. Oh, my God. Do. What are people doing with their time? With CGI. Time? Okay, the last one. This one This one is the hardest one. Okay. I, uh, the last one. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Do the do whatever whatever I'm vocal ready. tricks I'm that ready. the actors Hold are ready to do. Here we go. Okay, here's the final one. <laughs> I knew the hisses. I knew you would not survive the hisses. There was no way you were surviving those. Oh yeah, that's God. it. You can't beat the hisses. I, you were doing wow. great, and then the hisses came. The hisses came, the and hisses I was really, every that put me over the edge. Single time. Okay, there you go. Okay, oh see, God. exactly. See, joy. Um, okay, final last thing we do. We do a thing called, I remember I played, played the game Outburst. It was like a, a basic like family feud played really fast. I give you a category, like if I said, Disciples. You'd have 30 seconds to say his name as many disciples. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. I'm not giving you disciples. Oh, I was like, oh, yeah. I started sweating. I'm not giving you disciples, like, yeah. but it's more, it's more relevant. Okay. Though, I guess I got you know, kicked the, out of Sunday the school. Gospels are always relevant. All right. Um, okay. So uh, this has nothing to do with the gospel. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, there are eight answers to this question. So you say as many, you have 30 seconds as many okay. as you can. We uh, talked earlier about Michael Schur, who yes. does the show, uh, your show, which I'm not going to name because it's an answer on here. Uh, give me the shows that Michael Schur has written for. He oh. has written for. Oh, we okay, got 30 seconds on the clock. Or 15 seconds. How many seconds we do? 30 seconds on the clock. Okay, we ready? Just name and don't worry about getting them wrong. Is it going Just name already? them out. I'll let you know. Just okay. I'll, 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 I say go. And if you get one wrong, it's okay. Just spit them out. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yes. The Office. The Good Place. Yes. Yes. SNL. Yes. Uh, 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 uh. That's it. That's all I got. That's hard. That's hard. That's hard. Okay, I'll give you a hint on one. Okay. Uh, he wrote a he wrote one with Rashida Jones. Oh, it, oh, a Black Mirror. Black Mirror, yes, that's correct. And uh, that was cheat. You gave this was me a that show one. with uh, Lisa Kudrow. That he wrote for one season. Oh my God! Uh, uh, oh, it's so good. Oh, she's so good in um, it. The comeback. Come back. That's correct. <gasps> You got every single one of them all. It was a own. little bit of a cheat though, because you helped me with those. I don't. I think we are together. Oh, it was we a team. We, 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 we team. Teamwork. Teamwork. Together. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you uh, for you, having uh, me. Uh, you are not surprisingly a delight. I love your work on the show. <laughs> thank and you. in all seriousness, I think *Light of the Moon* is a wonderful movie that everyone thank should go you. see. It's on iTunes. I watched it. Yes, it's on iTunes. Watch it. And of course, watch *Brooklyn Nine-Nine*. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Stephanie Beatrice, she's the best.